An opposition leader in Kenya is accusing the government of, quote, police atrocities. The opposition leader says that his party is assembling evidence that security forces targeted people from his ethnic community. Demonstrations have increased over the last few weeks, criticizing the president over the cost of living expenses and newly imposed taxes in the East African nation. And we go now to Edward Clancy, Outreach Director for Aid to the Church in Need. Ed, so good to see you. Um, I know Aid to the Church in Need really has been following the situation from the very start in Kenya very closely, too. Uh, that said, can you give us a little bit more insight into what is happening there and just how dire is the situation? Well, the president, uh, President Ruto, and the administration instituted uh, uh, tax increases and as well as other changes that have cost uh, some of the poor uh, problems with their jobs and income. And because of that, an opposition leader, um, Uzumio Umoja, uh, is instigating sort of uh, protests. And they clamped down on the protests so hard that uh, protesters have been killed. And the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria uh, has issued a statement in concert with the other faith leaders asking for the stop of the violence. And in fact, the Archbishop Muharia actually asked the president to suspend the new finance law and to institute changes that will be more gradual and yet still get the same results. Yeah, Ed, and what do you think will come from that, you know, the church getting involved in this? Well, it's always hopeful because uh, we have to be a voice for those who, you know, have no voice or very little voice. And it's good that they're standing up for these people because we can see in a lot of these countries that there is the possibility of the, the government getting overly dictatorial and clamping down on people who just really want to feed their children and maintain their businesses. Yeah, it really is uh, concerning. And what about the aid to the church in need? Uh, how is your organization supporting things there? Well, we work through the church, the local church, and as of right now, the you know the church is working to help some of these poverty programs. But more importantly, right now, it's working on the the dialogue between uh, the different parties. And we uh, the the Catholic Church was one of the groups that instigated the the concerted letter to the president asking for changes and asking for more peace and calm. I want to turn now to another country of particular concern, uh, Nigeria, a country that we've discussed several times uh, before. Why do you think the violence against Christians there, why does it continue? And what's being done to stop it? I mean, how has the international community responded? What would you like them to do? Well, the situation in Nigeria is, is dire. In fact, uh, Benue, the place that everyone in Nigeria seems to forget about, the center of the country, uh, about 80 percent of all Christians killed for their faith are dying in, in Benue, in that one state. And the, the particular uh, statistics of Benue are that it's 95 percent Christian and about 80, 85 percent Catholic. So it's a very Catholic Christian dominated area. And they've been uh, attacked by, you know, so-called um, a Fulani herdsmen. But in fact, what it is is a terrorist activity. They're going in and destroying parts of the state. And in fact, the, Archdi the Diocese of McCurdy, which is in the capital of Benway, has lost 14 parishes and eight, 840 churches and chapels in the last uh, seven years, just to show you the changes that have happened in that city, in, the, in that state. Additionally, since the beginning of last year, more than 600 people that, that are known by the diocese have been killed. And, you know, they've undertaken the, the uh, the project of actually taking these people's names down so they're not forgotten, because too many times when these things happen and there are a lot of killings, they just become numbers and people forget that these are people. They have names, they have families. And, you know, there's there's a call to action when you hear a name. Absolutely. Ed, we have less than a minute left, but I quickly want to talk about this. I know that your organization is working really hard uh, to get mm -hmm. Congress to act on this situation. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, Congressman Chris Smith, at the beginning of this year, instituted a resolution or wrote a resolution, and it was uh, it was co-signed by um, uh, Henry, Henry Cuellar from Texas. And the idea is to have Nigeria designated a country of particular concern and uh, assign a special envoy to oversee what's going on there. And uh, at the recent hearings in Washington, uh, Congressman Smith uh, brought up this, the topic of Nigeria, and he's been a champion. And Aid to the Church in Need has been helping the, the the bishops in Nigeria to be a voice, because many of them do not want to be forgotten. As as Bishop Anagbe, who I believe is on on your your program a few weeks ago, has said that it's a silent conspira a conspiracy of silence. That so many people are dying. 1.5 to 2 million people are displaced, and no one's talking about Benway. 
Uh, can you imagine two million people who have, who have left their homes and now they're living in, they're not even camps, they're just gatherings of, of plastic tarps and, uh, you know, mud and, you know, barely, the barest uh, surviving, uh, elements for survival. It's so hard to imagine. Ed, thank you so much for all that you guys do. We appreciate it and keeping this on the radar. Thanks so much.